All right. So Mo joining me all the way from, is it Skagway? Are you in Skagway? Yes. Skagway, Alaska. Beautiful. I've actually been to Skagway and you can oh. probably guess how I visited Skagway. On a cruise ship? <laughs> on a cruise ship. Yeah, yeah. on a cruise ship. That's yeah. a pretty common way to visit Skagway. <laughs> I, I bet. What are your thoughts living there? What are your thoughts on all the people that just come in for the day? Is Do you enjoy it or is it like, eh, just kind of like, this is, you know, just the whole touristy thing? Yeah, no, I like it. Yeah. Um, I feel like, you know, a lot, maybe a lot of the locals, they sometimes like, you know, they get over it because they've been, it, it's just this rotating cycle. But for me, yeah. I feel like, by the time like like right now we're in the dead of winter like when mm -hmm. people start trickling in it's like all these new faces and new people and i'm i'm pretty social so i feel like i like that aspect of meeting new people and going out and seeing you know strange faces mm -hmm. because when you live in a small tiny town it's the same faces over and over and over again um, it is a tiny town i was gonna say do people I come love. in do people come in during the winter for cruise ships? Um, no, no cruise ships, but there yeah. are like visitors and stuff. So okay. I feel like just by the time you're like, you've had it and you're so ready to see people, they trickle in. And mm -hmm. then by the time you're like, oh my God, I'm so ready for all the tourists to leave, they trickle out. Nice. And like this perfect cycle of like, they come and they go and they come. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> bugs, like they come, they eat, they leave. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I I can imagine how it feel if I like tourists consistently come into my hometown. I'm not sure how much I would appreciate that, but I know Alaska and like almost like the boom of Alaska, a lot of it has to do with tourists, and that's obviously really good for small business owners and whatnot. Yeah, and, yeah, you know, I'm sure you're aware. Of and that. so my my business started because of the tourist season. So um, really, I, yeah, that's like how my whole thing started was. I worked at a restaurant here in town at the Westmark Hotel. I don't know if you went to Bonanza Bar and Grill um, or the Chilton. Probably walk, probably walk by it because there's yeah, yeah it's got the green sure. awning. Everybody walks by it if you're okay. going down Broadway. So okay. it's it's a it's a nice fun bar. Um, and I used to work in there, and there's a handful of us that all had dogs, and we would walk each other's dogs. <laughs> okay. Like, whoever was not the busy one that day, because sometimes like um my manager uh bartender he would have like a long long shift so I'd be like I'll just grab your dog and it turned into we each adopted a second dog later in a different year <laughs> and then it was like uh I'll take your dog and your dog and then our four dogs so we had like six dogs and it wasn't like a real job it was just like hey I'm going out on my lunch break between my two jobs and we all just know how to hustle and work a bunch and I feel like everybody works hard and plays harder. So it's, we, this is how it happened. Um, Wiggins and Carl, Carl's my first dog and Wiggins was their first dog. They were BFF. Yeah. And so we discovered that our dogs are 10 times more tired if they play with each other. And they, you know, you're walking down the trail and the dogs are like, near, 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 near all over the place. So right. it was a big perk to be like, I'll just grab Wiggins. <laughs> tire out Carl and then my friend Dan and Autumn they would grab Carl when they would go for a hike so that was kind of how it started was you walk my dog I'll walk your dog <laughs> so, I mean I it was a no-brainer to at least ask you to come on a podcast being called the pursuit of happiness and like I feel like you have a job that so many people would just love to do and a career that kind of blew up if you will yeah. I'll talk talk about that in a moment but I am a dog person. Uh, as I mentioned, we have three Huskies in the house right now, yeah. which are all great for Alaska, not necessarily North well, Carolina Huskies. where we're at, but um, big dog guy, big and uh, talking to people who are pursuing their passions and making their dreams and goals come true. And yeah. what in the world happened? I mean, <laughs> am I right in saying that like you went viral? Am I correct? I mean, I, yes. I think it's a problem. Oh yeah. I felt like we went viral last winter. But this is like a new level of viral. Um, I I remember one of our videos hit like 50,000 views and we were like, wow. And then wow, that same yeah. video kept going and it was like, oh, wow, it's at 100. And then it was like, oh, it's at 300K. And then the next video <laughs> hit like 8 million and we were like, whoa. That and I remember crazy. thinking that that was like a lot. And like, just like now, it was on New Year's, um, we hit a million followers on TikTok. And every time we refreshed our page, it would be like a hundred more, a hundred, a hundred more. So we were like, we literally had a countdown into the new year of like counting into a million followers on TikTok. 
Wow. That was like our celebration. It was like, oh, we had a million on, on TikTok. Bravo. That is so cool. That's really cool. And in and, and all honesty, so my dad actually sent me, uh, I think it was probably a reel on Instagram or it was an article. I think it was an article. And mm-hmm. we saw, I saw the video and I was like, that is freaking awesome. We were laughing at it. We we're like, this is amazing. And for people who are listening to the, yes, it's the video where you're picking up the dogs with the bus and that just the 55 million viewed yeah, video that, that, that went crazy this year. Yeah. So it, <laughs> it, in, in my credit, I didn't know that went viral when I reached out to you. I was like, I got to just okay. reach out to them because this is awesome. And then I started to kind of like do the math on some of like the videos I was watching and I was doing research on you after I had reached out and you said, yes, and I'm thankful you did that. And I was <laughs> like, oh, this, this is actually going nuts. Yes. <laughs> so. You must have got to me uh, before a handful of others, because I've hit this peak of like, I, I'm just going to put my head in the sand now. Wow. <laughs> like, um, so yeah, there's like a handful of people that I feel like got to me first <laughs> and that definitely um, I was yeah. able to schedule that. And now I'm so like overwhelmed by emails and stuff like that. I don't even look through them anymore. My husband does it every morning. He has to wake up an extra hour early to Holy sort cow. through our emails to look and see if there's actually anything important in there. <laughs> Wow. And for people listening to this, we will get to the video in your business at the moment. Yeah. I just got to ask about this virality because that's crazy. Like, what do you, what do you yeah. think about that? Just blowing up overnight overall? Is it really cool or, or what are your thoughts? Well, and So I feel like from the outsider's perspective, maybe it seems like one solid blow up and then poof, there it is, but that's yeah. not how it happened. I'd spend this very slow uphill thing. Um, because I've been posting on the media for probably six years or seven years or so. Um, And it was like, the reason why I posted was for the dog owners. So they could see where (laughs) their dog went, who they played with. I always took like a class photo. And then on my Instagram story, I would just like pan around at our destination and get them like running and playing. Mm -hmm. Um, Or if there's like a a trail that's kind of nice and wide open, I would always like film right there, record right there. And that would eliminate answering the same question over and over and over again to the owner of like where did you go what did they do like how was how were they and you know the owner wants to know how their dog was I totally understand so it's kind of like taking a picture shows Mm -hmm. exactly who they walked with and then showing a video of where we were it's such a small town you can tell by the landmarks where we went so they know you know what kind of walk they got or like oh wow you went up to lower lake today I got you there pooped like yeah Um, (laughs) just stuff like that was like for the owner, because I mean, back when I had like four dogs, I could tell the owner at work, what right. we did, you know, right. or I would see my coworker later. And, I, or when I actually grabbed the dog, we maybe passed each other because we lived in employee housing. So, you know, we're right there. But when I, when I moved and I had my own housing and I worked there less and I got different clients, it was like, you know, everybody wants to know. And so if I'm walking like four to six dogs talking to each owner for five minutes, right. Adds up, right. Um, a lot. That's actually when, you know, you got 12 dogs in one group talking to each owner for five minutes is longer than the actual walk itself. <laughs> <laughs> so it like, and that was a whole thing where people would be like, Oh, wow, you're running late. And I'm like, no, so-and-so was asking questions or let's say there was a behavior problem that I noticed like, Hey, your dog was uh, barking and chasing a child on the bike. We're going to need to work on that. You know, things like that, where we need to discuss like, Hey, your dog's been fine, but now we've encountered this problem. We need to train and work on this. So then just, so the owners and I are always in communication of like what the dog is doing and what they're up to and what kind of training we need to apply. Um, So that kind of eliminated a lot of the back and forth, like simple questions (laughs) of like, you know, so that's why I started posting in the first place. Plus, when I have a dog sitter and somebody sends me pictures of my dog, I'm just like, oh. it makes you feel better. I'm completely that person. Yeah, you you see it. like, okay, they're out hanging out with their buds. They went for a walk around the loop. Like that's cool. And it just makes you happy to see your dogs when you're, I miss my dogs like crazy when I travel. So I love when my friends send me pictures of my dog. So I know I try to give back what I would personally want. And I'm kind of needy about like, how, how are they? Do they have breakfast? Yep. You know? <laughs> I completely get that. So my wife, my wife and I, now we got married in September and we did a destination wedding. And so we needed to find a dog sitter because the people that would watch our dogs were coming to the wedding. So that was the first time 
we ever had to find a dog sitter and we were like, no, we don't want to board our dogs. We want someone yeah. to come stay at our house where they're comfortable. And so there's three of them and we found somebody and she ended mm -hmm. up being great. And we're just like, listen, send photos and photos and videos as much as you want. It'll put us at ease. I promise. Yes. Cause I know we're getting married. Yes, we're busy, but it'll make us feel a lot better and enjoy the experience. Yeah, you want to like wake up and like see a picture of your dog, right? Because you're used exactly. to making, seeing your dog. So exactly. I get that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. we're walking like beloved family members. You know, these aren't oh, just, God, yeah. these aren't the kinds of owners that like tie their dogs up outside and leave them outside all day. You know, these dogs like sleep in their owner's beds, like yeah. You know, they, they get home cooked meals, a lot of them. So I've pet sat for them and I'm like cooking them, like making their stuff. And I'm like, what is in your dog's food? My dogs need this. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. I, I do want to talk about food and nutrition uh, just a little bit down the road here. Mm -hmm. um, but like, what's your background with dogs? Like, are, would you say you're a professional trainer? Because I'm watching your videos. It's like, you know exactly what you're doing. Yeah. And so, you know, the dog training community is pretty unregu unregulated. It's not like you need a, a certification or a degree or something like that. So so really anybody could say that they're a dog trainer, mm -hmm. right? If anybody pays you for your services, you can claim dog trainer. Um, but um, my, I feel like my whole life is just slowly led up to what I'm doing. I never set out to be a dog trainer and I never set out to be a dog walker at all. <laughs> that was never my thing. Um, but my parents were dog breeders. So I grew up with a pack of dogs. Mm -hmm. I had four parents. My parents were divorced and remarried. And they're so like my my mom was into Great Danes. My stepdad was into German Shepherds and Huskies. My dad was into Labradors. And my stepmom was into Toy Poodles, which is why I have little dogs, because then okay. I learned little dogs rock. Um, <laughs> Napoleon, that was our family dog. Oh, there you go. That's a good name. Napoleon. Um, <laughs> best dog ever. Um, so that I just had four parents that were just totally different styles of dog owners. So I really got, you know, quite a, a good variety of just the average pet owner. Mm -hmm. And then, um, my stepdad was really into dog shows. Um, I guess he used to mush. This was like when I, I was too little, didn't know any of that. He was into mushing. Wow. So when I was growing up, I saw his retired sled dogs. So we had like our, these dogs lived outside. They were not household they were not pets they were right. working dogs so I knew what a working dog was and I knew what a show dog was and I knew what a pet was like that was just my lifestyle and I loved to go to the kennels mm. I thought like the squeegee to clean the the kennel floor was fun <laughs> so oh, wow. be like wait for me after school please I used to beg my stepdad to wait for me to bring me out to the kennel like I'll help you clean up poop just you know I just want to come wow. um so I'm you know and now that I, I work with dogs I actually see like sure I thought I was being helpful by asking him to wait for me you know I'll help clean the kennels but it's like it's just a kid playing with a squeegee like I'm really not that helpful <laughs> I'm just getting it done so I I really appreciate those experiences I had and um we actually had at one point rescued a retired police dog and just seeing the training of that dog we ended up having to rehome it it did not mesh well with our other German Shepherd at home it okay. needed to live in a house where there was no other dogs um, so we had her for a very small period of time, but just the training level was just like mind blowing to me. Like my mom and I, we, we would like spin our finger and the dog would like whip into a heel and like get between your legs and do that middle, like wow. right between your legs, you know, and walk with you. Mm -hmm. And then you say, sit, she's like, boom, sit down, sit. And just like so serious. And it was just like, wow, you know, this dog, if we can't, we, we can't have this. This is not for us, you know? <laughs> That's um, too good. <laughs> yeah, and I would say anybody who's adopted a working line German Shepherd and expecting it to be a, he a pet, they understand that 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 was not a good a good yeah. fit. Um, so in, even though we had working dog Huskies, pets not the same as a retired police dog. Right. Oh God. That no. did not. And it might have been like a wash or something too. It might have been a police dog that got washed. I'm, I I was a kid. I don't really. I have to ask my parents about that. But I mm -hmm. she had the best obedience I had ever seen. And it like blew my mind that the fingers swirl. So, but now I know how all that works. I can point, my dogs can spin and do little tricks. And it's it's just an evolution of training. But I, I do have that, like, even though I can train like that, I do know what it feels like to be like, wow. Right. Look at that dog that they did it. Like just on a finger, they like 
did a whole thing. Um, so like that was inspiring to me. I feel like I, all along the way, I've had these like cool dogs that have inspired me to learn more or learn how to train like that. You know, Animal Planet watching Caesar Milan. I feel like any dog lover is like watched some Caesar Milan. Mm -hmm. Um, you probably read all of his books as a kid. I was like super into that. Um, I go to like seminars whenever I, I'm wearing a Tom Davis shirt right now. I speak, I speak dog. dog. I love it. Yeah. I, I love to dog walk in his shirts because they say no bad dogs. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, I, I just, I love that Tom Davis has kind of started that um, like no bad dog movement because <laughs> usually behavior problems are from a lack of understanding from the owner, not yeah. the dog, right? Yeah. Or like a misplaced dog, the dog with the wrong energy, with the wrong owner, where it's not the dog, it's the person, right? Um, so I love to wear these shirts because people will say, well, you've never met my doodle at home. I'm like, I'm sure it's not the doodle. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Oh. It's, it's, it's funny you say that because uh, almost two years ago I got, so I got my two Huskies uh, e-collar trained and yeah. really good experience with that. One of them still needs some help and Maybe we can talk offline later if you want, uh, <laughs> as far as confidence issues goes. I don't know how. Oh, to, yeah, yeah, yeah. I do a lot of confidence building in dogs. Well, let's hold on next. I will ask you about that. But my other yeah. dog, Raven, biggest pain in the ass. Um, <laughs> and she was just so, she would not listen. It was like, it would take an hour for her to come in from the backyard that she would just make me chase her. But it's funny how, and I'm sure you've seen this. It's oh, I've, I've chased, I've chased a dog in a fenced in yard. I had to call for help before. Oh my I God. Chased. It takes oh, forever. Yeah. The dog. Oh, yeah. it, this was a, a husky greyhound mix. Yeah, Could it. not catch this dog. I freaking believe <laughs> it. But yeah, it's like, once I got that dog trained, it was like, she looks in my eyes and is like, what's next, sir? What can I do for you? It was like, whoa, it blew my mind. Like you were saying, I was like, whoa, this is what it feels like to yeah. have like, See, I thought it was going to be different because I thought <clears throat> using the e-collar, you know, like I was like, mm, she's not going to like me as much. It was almost like she liked me more because it was like, yes, you're giving Clear me communication. To do. It's a yep. it's a way that the dog understands. Yeah. And, you know, with the e-collar, I wouldn't say it's like for every dog, for every situation. And there's so many different ways you can train. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, Tom Davis, Tom Davis trains like one way and I train another way. Like okay. there's not a one way to train with the e-collar. Mm -hmm. And there's so some people see one trainer doing compulsion, like heavy on the compulsions. And then they're, they're fearful about trying it on their dog. Cause they, yeah. they think, you know, shock collar, it's, it must be pain and abusive to, you know, listen to me or else I'm going to hurt you, you know, and that's not, you know, the tool is only as good as the person holding it. Right. And that's, I feel like what's important about the e-collar mm -hmm. is, um, you know, if you can use it in a way to communicate to your dog, then it's a really valuable tool. Yep. And for, for her, I don't have to use it anyway. The other one I have to consistently she's not paying attention to me, but yeah. Um, so people don't want to hear about my dogs. People want to hear more about you and your experience. Um, I got to ask you, so in this video, you're driving around in this bus. First of all, where did that idea come from? And second of all, do people really let their dogs just kind of hang out in their front lawn? Like it's their no, kid. Gary, no, his owner, Gary is right there with him. He's okay. Like, like in the, no, he, Gary. I was hoping you'd say yes. Doing <laughs> yard work or something. Well, no, he is. So, you know, what's really funny is yeah. that same dog, Amaru, every once in a while, he'll get loose in town. And he'll like make his way. We're like neighbors kind of. He'll like come over to my house and say hi. But today he was on Broadway and people <laughs> were posting all over um, our community page. Celebrities spotting on Broadway. <laughs> <in the park." laughs> and Gary was downtown too. So Gary was around. Gary's Amaru's dad. So he was around awesome. and he grabbed him. But it, it's just pretty funny. Um, it's small town. Everybody knows everybody's dogs. We, there's not like, you know, a lot of like strict city stuff in a, in a town that's only four streets wide. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, I saw that was my favorite part of the video is seeing like the dog just laying outside, oh, just waiting to be you? picked sorry, up. My husband's just looking at me. Don't no. You know, like, yeah, sorry if you're lying. Right no. All good. No, all good. He has Hi. Gonna go to. So I Hi. have you now. Vern's part of the podcast. <laughs> Hi. Um, so I have another question as far as like the business goes. So being in Alaska multiple times, I was actually just up there last year. We went to Seward, uh, Denali, um, yeah. Talkeetna and up to Fairbanks and stuff. Did that kind of big, big road up there. A lot of wildlife. 
Do you run into wildlife when you take the dogs out at all? Do you have to worry about that? So my dog walks, like my pack walks that, you know, where we do the bus thing, where we pick up a whole pack and we go out. Um, I feel like people think that we're maybe out way out in the woods or something, but we're just at a park, like a, a pretty, okay. Lola's busting through. Can you crate her while we're doing this? We're dog sitting <laughs> a giant dog. Lola, she's it's on the part of the, bus. She's the biggest part... dog we walk. Really? That's awesome. Yeah. yeah, we have Lola for a little bit. They're going into White Horse. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, so we walk in the middle of the day. So it's like the brightest, hottest, especially during the summer. Like, so bears are hibernating right now. So they're not mm. out and about. Okay. Um, porcupines are around. We've had a really bad incident with one of those one time. Uh, That's actually worse than bears. Um, so we're on the middle of the day. It's the hottest part. It's the busiest part of the day. Like there's not, bears aren't just like wandering around in the hottest part of the day. Yeah. They only come out when it's like cool. Um, they're out like really early in the morning. So early when I used to walk with my best friend and our dogs, like not a, I wasn't like picking up the bus full of dogs. We were just hiking we've heard them crashing around and just like, let's go. And that was before we got our curly and bear dogs. So okay. my curly and bear dog is right here. Echo, come here. Can you see your little ears? No, she's not going to jump on my lap with my son here, I guess. Uh, um, so she, <laughs> yeah, curly and bear dog for a reason. Um, I used to be pretty nervous of running into bears because I, I have ran into them and Carl will charge them and bark at them and I'll just get to safety. But he needed backup. Wiggins is, was his backup, but Wiggins moved. Wiggins doesn't live here anymore. Oh, no. <laughs> they were a really good team. And even then, um, we needed like a bigger dog to have a little bit more like beef in their bark. Right. Um, so I always carry bear spray. You're, you got to be really loud. You walk around clapping your hands, yelling, yelling something. I'm not going to yell because my dogs will freak out on that cue. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so the biggest thing with bears is being bear aware. So knowing the time of day, that's the least likely to run into them. Um, being really loud, super loud. If you're loud, bears are going to run in the other direction. Mm. The problem people have is when you're quietly walking by yourself and you come around a tight corner and then there's mama bear with cubs. That's that happened to me. That happened to me in August in Glacier National Park. We turned the corner terrifying. and there was mama bear and her two cubs were right there. Terrifying. Not fun. Absolutely terrifying. Okay. Um, I ran into mama bear and cubs in my in my front yard last fall. Wow. Um, it, no, it wasn't last fall. I think it was the previous one before. I can't keep my. COVID was it back. grizzly brown bear? What was grizzly it? bear. Yeah, grizzly bear was munching on my neighbor's apples, and it was pitch black. I didn't know they were there at all. I was about to carry my groceries inside. Oh my god! And my dog alerts me, and I'm like, "Where? I don't oh see my god. anything." And then she like does her bear haze. So she's just like hazing like crazy. And she's on like a, a regular flat collar <laughs> with like a plastic buckle, you know, uh -huh. mm -hmm. popped right off of it. And she's like, and so when you commit, you have to commit. You can't let your dog go and come back because then she'll bring the bears to me. Mm. And so I leave my groceries and my dog's charging the bears. So I'm like, me too. Get big, start yelling, <laughs> start you know, and then uh, we chased them out of the yard and they ran towards the river. And it's just like, just kind of commit to pushing them away from my neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And then there was like, <laughs> there was a car, car, they had to stop. There goes mama grizzly, baby grizzly, my dog, and then me. And I'm pregnant, oh my super pregnant. God. And then I'm, I got to the point where I'm like, okay, that's good. The bears have committed to escaping. So then I call Echo off and she turned on a dime, like the verbal call turns back to me. And then we walked back home. Wow. That is, that is amazing. I was actually wondering that, like, do they listen to you when they're that focused on like, an oh, animal, my dogs? like the bear, oh yeah, you know? I, I train, I train them though. Like I, I knew she would listen really good. Um, how often well, do you have to yeah, just straight naked she didn't have anything on then she came back first call wow how often do you have to practice do you have to keep practicing for a dog to listen like that oh yeah i'm gonna put him in his playpen and see if he wants to so i do a lot of distraction training which actually circles back to the very first question you asked me about how do i feel about the tourist yeah they're my distractions oh when i'm working a dog and like there's people sitting outside they're like they're eating their dough boy and they're eating their 
their ice cream cones. Um, I do a very focused leave it and the dog must stare at me as we pass by the distractions. And it's this very engaged, like, so I do this little like slap and I put my arm out. My dog has to stay right in that space. Okay. Got it. And she's not allowed to exit the space while my arm is like that. Got um, it. So that's a way to get like a really formal recall. So I could call her, slap my leg, and she's going to come and get into a heel and stay with me until I say so. Yep. And that's just through a lot of training, like in the house, in the yard, around my neighborhood, and then with the tourists, <laughs> and then passing like tourists and other dogs on the trail. So if you're doing it, you don't want to be there by yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, doing a lot of training. And I wouldn't say, um, so and I'm not really worried about the bears with my clients because we're so loud. The dogs are running around and barking mm -hmm. and my dog's like alert to smells of bear. Like if they smell bear poop, they start hazing. So wow. then it's like, okay, is there a real bear or was one just around? So what does hazing mean? <laughs> do you want to hear it or no? <laughs> do I really want to hear it? What is it? Do you, yeah, do, do you ready for your ears to bleed a little bit? Yeah, that's as long as that's bear. okay with the baby. <laughs> Good. Wow. Bear. Break. So wow. you get, actually... you do a bear, you go, whoa. Bear. Oh my God. So you're going to yell at the bear like that. And my dogs are going to back me up and they're just not going to stop barking. And if we actually ran into a real bear, Carl would just like not stop. Just. Oh my God. I wasn't expecting that. And that got. That, what a good girl. Yes. I know. There's not a real one. That got they slightly drowned out crazy. because of, because of zoom, but you could hear it was almost too high that the microphone couldn't pick it up. That's unbelievable. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So they, she gets like, she gets crazy. <laughs> Holy cow. And so we have an off switch too. When we're done, we're done. No more. <laughs> break. Okay. And then uh, it's hard for Carl to break when there's not a real target. So, because people on TikTok have asked and I've showed them, but then he's like looking where he's like, where you gave the cue and he's like, great. Wow. Um, they, it's their favorite game in the world to, <laughs> to yell at bears. Wow, that's unbelievable. Um, that's just something I don't ever have to deal with right down have you ever here. Seen, so. Like those protection dogs where like they teach the dog to just bark at the person and the dog is just holding and barking. No, I don't think so. I don't think I'm familiar so with there's that. Like, yeah, it's it's a trained cue where the dog just barks and barks and barks until you say to stop. Wow. So yeah, no, they're kind of looking around a little bit, but when, when it's done, it's done. So I gotta ask, there's probably people listening to this and like seeing your videos or asking, can you train my dogs? Are you being requested to train dogs just consistently now? So I feel like people aren't um, usually very committed to doing it. Yeah. People will ask, but actually following through. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, loca the location isn't the easiest either, right? In Skagway. <laughs> when we're talking, sometimes he just likes to babble along too. That's um right. So yeah, some people do set up Zooms. I do Zooms on Saturdays. So I do oh, train great. a lot. Um, and I feel like with the Zooms or even training in person, one thing that drives me crazy is people just want to tell the whole story of their old dog. Like maybe not even the dog we're training, mm. where it's like, you are paying for a slot of time. <laughs> I, I wish you would use it. <laughs> like I have so many things that I could teach you, but people spend too much time like talking about their old dog or like why they think their dog is behaving that way. And I'm kind of like, well, it doesn't really matter because it, it's, it's all the same. Yeah. Really. I mean, not, not that every dog trained the way you train is the same, but there is a very similar copy and paste, like mm -hmm. get your dog to engage with you you know, get your dog to pay attention. And the way you get your dog to pay attention and engage is pretty similar dog to dog. Like <laughs> learning how to walk nice on a leash, you know? Yeah. Um, but it, it definitely changed if the dog is fearful or if they're reactive or, you know, aggressive or, you know, something like that will tweak for sure, like the training. But 
Yeah, I can definitely. Not, like, it doesn't really matter, you know, the whole history of the dog. You got what you got. Let's work with it. Yeah, I can definitely probably use your assistance. I wish you were much closer to me at this moment. But um, so I got I got to go back. I got to ask you, like, where did the idea of a shuttle come from? That's a little that's a little unique. So I started on my bike. He's going to tell the story. Apparently. <laughs> you want this? Why don't you chew on something? That would be great. Um, <laughs> here. So I used to ride around on my bike and I would pick up dogs and I had to stop using my bike when I started getting puppies. Cause you can't bike and hike puppies. It's not good for their joints. Um, so we needed to do a pickup. So I started using my van and it got trashed. Like oh, it yeah. got so nasty. It's so stinky. Like having your friends ride in your car and just reeks like wet dog and dog farts. You know, it got like, and then like traveling with that van, it's like, it's gross now. I don't want to sleep in my van anymore. Um, so I purchased a really large van, a gladiator. And the whole back had no seat. So there's like the two front, the middle bench, and then the whole back was just like a big open thing. And I, I bought this big rubber non-slip mat. And the reason why I did that was because Laika didn't like riding with the puppy. Uh. She wanted to go for the walk and she wanted to hang out and she loved going, but she didn't like the licky puppies. Are you bouncing now? <laughs> um, so that's what gave me the first idea of like, oh, you can't just, you know, put the dogs in the car together like the licky puppies want to lick the older dogs and they're like trying to get away <laughs> you know they're like stop licking me um so i used to let her ride in the front and i had to boot, boot my dogs into the back and they were like we ride shotgun um so it's kind of like every dog i got like kind of taught me something new or i would change my business a little bit during like because certain dogs would have certain behaviors or whatever right so I had a three, I had the front for the little dogs, the middle was for the calm medium dogs and the back was the licky puppies. And I used to like put it in reverse and go beep, 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 by myself, to myself, for myself. <laughs> <laughs> I would just pretend it's a bus. I would pull up and be like, the school bus is here, you know, time to get on the, in the puppy school bus. And my friends would call it like the magic school bus. It was just a van. But I called Juno to see how much it would cost to get my van painted like a bus. Way too much for a garbage van. Like my van was so cheap and not not very nice. So I wasn't yeah. gonna spend more on the paint job. I'm glad too, because the van is dead. It's no longer working. Um, <laughs> so just kind of like joking that I had a bus. And then, um, so my minivan that I was using for a long time, I had that, then we bought the van. And then my husband joined me around COVID and that was great because he would drive the minivan and I would drive the big van and we would split the pickup so he could go grab the licky puppies and I'll go grab the calm dogs or something or like switch it. And then we each had our own crew that we'd pick up. We'd meet at the trailhead and we would do our walk together. And so that was very efficient and fast. And then my minivan died oh. and it just stopped working. And this is like my college van. I've had this van since... I don't even know what it's old, old van. And then uh, the dog van, I, the big one, I was driving it. I was on my way to pick up Lincoln and I turned and my tire just fell off in the street. Jeez. So now we're out of commission, middle of winter, negative wind chills, too cold to walk the dogs on foot. I would pick them up on foot and take them for a walk. You getting over it? Are you getting over it? Mm -hmm. um, so I would have to like, cancel like Jake because he he was too cold to walk to the destination um so people were offering me to use their vehicles and I'm like you have no idea how nasty like uh-uh I can't use your <laughs> your nice and they're like well we have a dog I'm like you have a chihuahua who gets a bath probably every week like, right you don't know what 40 dogs a day in your vehicle looks oh like. my it's god stinky hi wow um, so I posted on my community page that I was in search of a, a big van, bigger than what I had. I wanted something bigger or a, a short bus. And somebody said they had a mini bus for sale, um, that they needed to get rid of it because of COVID. It was just sitting for a couple of years. And, um, we went to go meet it, meet the, the guy selling it. And we saw it in the garage and we were like, we can't, we can't afford that. A nice bus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But. 
uh, Jeff Hamilton is who he bought it from. And we've heard that he's just a really nice business guy. And he's just like, <laughs> yeah, <Vern. laughs> my goodness. Um, he's just a nice guy. And he's like always willing to help people out. <laughs> Just like you, I appreciate you chatting with me. So cheap. We got such a good deal on that. Um, so then it had like, it had some, it has some, Lola, leave it. It has some like parks. I don't know. There's a salon that lives. So the bus, we scored the bus <laughs> to our awesome community and the connections to our community that's incredible it's it's so cool so so was it like super well known before this video blew up did everyone know who it was or now the video blew up now everyone knows who you are way before i even made a tiktok account um people would run into me and like in town and be like oh you're skagway's famous dog trainer oh, wow. i was like local local like people knew who i was because i right. drive around the silly van with paw prints all over it <laughs> All right, fast enough. The dogs are hanging their heads out the window. I mean, I'm quite the spectacle walking 12 dogs up and down the street. Like, you know. Is that what it is? 12? Because I saw a video you're walking nine. Walking three is hard enough for me. So you walk yeah, 12? Yeah, I do 12 a lot. The most like... I've taken by myself is 17. Um, But that's like the right dog. That's usually because I'm like dog sitting three dogs. Like, you... like somebody owns three dogs and I'm dog sitting all of them. And then I have my three dogs and then our nine clients. That's how I get up to that number sometimes. But I, got... I try not to do that. I like to keep the, the groups around nine clients and then my three dogs, which makes 12. I mean, you're kind of putting Caesar Milan to shame here. I mean, you are like the dog whisperer. If you can walk 17, do you let them all off leash too? Oh yeah. Wow. It depends on the dog. Like these aren't just random, you know, these are, it has to be like the right vibe. Right. The dogs have to be like a click. Yeah. They have to be like the perfect, the perfect mesh. Yeah. Because even having six dogs that aren't a vibe is a lot, you know, having like four untrained, even walking two dogs that aren't trained, that's a lot. Yeah. Like, well, that's, that was my life. One, one untrained dog at a time. Yeah. That like was back in, back in the day when I had our original my two dogs and my friend had two dogs. Mm -hmm. Um, to train them to ride together on the bike, I had to take one dog at a time, teach them their spot, add in a second dog, and then I'd have to do the third and see who who walks better next to who and try to find that dog's spot. Not feeding you fast enough, geez. <laughs> Um, so each dog had to learn its spot individually, and then they had to go with the second dog, and then I wow. would bring in the third, and I would rotate that out until they got used to that, and then I could do all four of them together. Wow. I never took four dogs out together who would never, you know what I mean? That's the word. I absolutely love hearing about all this discipline that you have with your dogs. It's just like, you know, like how serious you take it, and... You know, but it's not also not you can so wing. serious either. Yeah, right. Well, yeah, yeah. Fun with it, clearly. Yeah. 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 Because I'm yeah, really I... serious about recall because dogs die with like or car chasing. So so serious about car chasing. That's to me non-negotiable. Yeah. There are some commands that are non-negotiable, and if I'm you know if if I'm in the house, I'm not gonna recall my dog to me because there's nothing dangerous going on. Mm -hmm. So I do like save those things for emergencies but you have to practice and train them for them to be you know it's like a fireman i live across the street like by the fire department and i can see them and like they're out there working all the time you know they're practicing right you know yeah. they, they got to get their gear on they got to they got to work out they got to do their stuff so that when something does happen they're prepared and it's muscle memory at that point is it uh c-o-m-e is that what you use or what word do you use for recall? I use their name. So it's always name for attention, name command. Okay. So Carl, Carl, come. Okay. He walks behind a door so he can't or he would. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I said, that's why I spelled it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so if I said, come here, or I went, come here, that's not recall. That's, right. that's me asking if you would like to come over to me. Mm. Um, 
but when I, when I like blow my whistle really long, like a big long whistle, that's a formal recall. It's the same thing as um, me saying their name, name command. And that's when I will, will follow through with a punishment if they don't come, which okay. could be like me popping on the long line, like tap, 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 until they're like, what? And you're like, I said, come. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, and so one of my, my big sayings I always tell people is to cue and then follow through. So don't call, 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 you know, because then that becomes your command. Oh, on the 10th time, maybe, maybe I come. That um, makes so, sense. So if your dog is out in the yard, like you said, you had the hard time getting them. Mm -hmm. The next few times I'd put the dog in a long line, call them. They don't come. I'd immediately just pop on the long line. One quick, sharp, like, hey, when then the dog should go, what? It should be enough for the dog to like kind of almost give you a dirty look, like, excuse you. And you're like, excuse you. <laughs> you know, not to like hurt them, but enough for them to be like, geez, you know, like you kind of want them to turn and look at you like, what? And then through repetitions, they learn that when you say that, if they don't look your way, they're going to get annoyed on the leash right. or the e collar or whatever tool, you know, you're using. And so the same is if you cue your dog and they look your way, you throw a party. Yeah, true. You know, and it's like, yeah, that's what I'm looking for. Good dog. And you entice them to come to you by like bending your knees and running away. And so then they want to chase you, um, especially if they have high prey driver, they're a puppy. And mm -hmm. then, um, you know, some people want to catch their dog and then punish them. That's a big no, no. That is how you destroy your recall because then the dog learns that getting in your space is bad mm. not getting in your space is good so i always tell people like i don't care what your dog was doing if they were running around on the beach and they were trampling people and they, you know they're really causing a scene and you're really mad and frustrated <laughs> by the time you get your dog you can't punish them yep i'm not saying necessarily like reward them but i would be neutral like when i finally get my dog it would be neutral or positive um because you don't want your space being being negative. You want yeah. your your bubble is the best thing that could happen. That makes a lot of sense. And I will say just to kind of like back you up and like what you do and how important it is that you do. Like I never regretted the money yeah. that I spent on my dog trainer. It's just like what a difference yeah. that yeah. made. It's, it's life changing for some people, is. especially if you have three dogs. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I actually read a comment today on Facebook where somebody was like saying, basically us owners, we are, we waste our money and our time on our dogs, like with, with services like, like mine. Mm -mm. And I'm like, I, I actually, there's, there's not really anything comparable to a well-trained dog. <laughs> like, no. it's amazing. Um, I had neighbors of dogs run into me and be like, I'm so glad you started picking up so-and-so because they bark less. So their neighbors have noticed a difference. You know, it's not just the person living with the dog that's reaping the benefits. It's your neighbors. It's the other people you run into on the trails. You know, it's, it's a community thing. Having well-mannered, he's like shaking. With <laughs> Having like a well-mannered dog, you can take them more places. They have more opportunities. They get more experiences. You have a better quality of life for them and for you. Mm -hmm. Like, I wish everybody knew how to teach their dog to walk nice on a leash, come when they're called, and to sit, stay. You know, like, yep. who cares about the fancy, fancy tricks? You know, like, those are the basics. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I completely agree with you 100%. My life was changed. I mean, my life is just pure happiness with my dogs, but a, oh. a dog that is trained is just even better. It's, it's yeah. just makes my life and their life so much better. You can, like you said, take them places, which means you can make memories, get photos. You can introduce them to other people that are important to you. Like, and like babies and ch children, you can trust them more around that. Yeah, so. yeah. Like if my dogs didn't have a good leave it command, I wouldn't let my baby like crawl around on the floor. Yeah. You know, but if I say leave it, my dogs know to like back up and like check in, like, what else can I have? Anything so, tired. so going back to going viral, I got to ask you a few more questions about that as we probably wind down here is, um, so what's like one of the 
coolest or most awe like request that you've gotten? Like I saw like CNN asked you to be on, was it like Rachel Ray asked you to be on? Like what are some of these requests that you've gotten that you're just kind of blown away? I think what's funny about that is, um, so like my friends messaged me the other day and they were like, oh, you're not nervous at all. You, you, you're so like calm and collected and you don't seem nervous at all. And I'm like, probably because I don't even know who they are. <laughs> Because I've always got my head in the sand. I live in the woods and I play with dogs. Like, I don't really, I don't know who, like, Lee, Lee sets amazing. them all up and tells me when I have stuff. And I'm like, all right. Like TMZ, I guess that was a big one for some, some people. And like, I had never even heard of it. <laughs> <laughs> so to me, it's like, oh, yeah, it's just some people. Like, but I also like, don't like, I guess, hold like people super, I don't know. It's like we're all good for you. Healthy, you know? Good for you. Because it's kind of like, why is that person more valuable than the person I'm training? Like, why should I be nervous talking to TMZ, but not nervous talking to, you know, a dog owner? Right. Like yeah. You. Good it's for you. Like, we're all we're all people, and we're all learning, and you know, there's. It's just I feel like holding holding certain people higher because of certain stuff is just like odd to, odd to me. I appreciate that. And I, I noticed like you posted on the Instagram the other day about like, you have to like turn down requests or you can't like respond to everybody's email or whatever. That's just, I can't, I can't even fathom that how that just happened. Like, my like, OCD wants to reply to everybody. Like if you've been on my TikTok for a while, I like, if I've read your comment, I like it. Unless yeah. it's like weird and I skip past it. <laughs> but I basically go through and I'm like, 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 and I answer every question that I can. I like, I get a little obsessive about it, but then it's like, you could spend hours doing yeah. that. Yes. Um. So that gets to like, I've had to accept that I just can't answer everybody anymore. And that happened on like TikTok. Mm -hmm. But when it happened to Instagram, I was like, oh, that's where I engage a lot with people. Right. <laughs> so I had to like, just put a like, I'm sorry. I sometimes see most of your messages. I just don't want people to think that I'm ignoring them because I, I don't like the fee. I don't like being ignored. And he's like, are you ignoring me? <laughs> I, just I like appreciate that. I genuinely can appreciate your, your mindset when it comes to that. Would you say this has changed your life at all? Or what are your thoughts? Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Um, I feel like, like a long time ago, I had a video on YouTube get like some hits and I feel like people thought I was making money off of it and I'm like I have less than a hundred subscribers like you have to have a thousand and plus x amount of watch time like you don't just get paid I feel like people think like people have made jokes like oh yeah you're making big money on the media and I'm like who's paying me <laughs> <laughs> I would like to know who and I just found out yesterday that you can get paid on Instagram and I had the wrong account for it. I've had like a business account this whole time. So oh. I've never had the creator fund on there. So I've never even tried or applied to make money on Instagram and on TikTok. It's, it's kind of embarrassing. People were like putting hats on the dogs and I was laughing. I didn't know that they were like gifts or money. I didn't realize people were sending me money really for, like, for months like such a ding dong. Like I didn't know at all. And I just thought it was funny. And I was laughing that people were putting hats on the dogs. And I think people were doing it because of my like, maybe genuine, like I just didn't know. But now I'm like, oh, people are tipping us. And they didn't know that there was like money going in the creator fund for a bit. And like, it's like, you know, send some pennies and stuff, but so funny. You got to keep it, right? That's yours, right? Yeah, yeah. All right, good. I have to figure out how to do my taxes now with it. <laughs> that is, that's hilarious. That's a good point. I'm just like, I'm fumbling. I, this has been the whole thing, the whole time, ever since I've been on my bike picking up dogs. That's just, unbelievable. We're just fumbling our way through this. I like that though. I mean, you're not getting a big head. You're an overnight celebrity in many people's eyes, but you know, you're still the same old mo, which is, I think is, that's incredible. I, I absolutely yeah. love that. So I appreciate that. And I also wanted to talk to you. I know you said you're the owner of traits supplements for yeah. dogs. I really want to talk about this, not just because it gives you a good opportunity to market your products, but I know supplements for dogs is really important. So I would love yeah, to talk about so how you I'm came up with this. Really, really picky. I am like, I'm a gear snob and I'm a food snob. Um, maybe because I'm a tourist or us are foodies. Maybe that's why, but I'm like, I'm a super food snob and I'm a super like dog food snob. 
not that I like know everything, but I just like, I do my best and I try yeah. to, you know, um, and that, so when people were messaging me about like supplements, I turned so many of them down. I'm like, I'm not going to give my dog that. I don't know what that is. Yeah. Um, so talking with traits and stuff like that, I really like the quality. Um, like we don't give out milk bones on our puppy bus. Like we don't use low grade, like, you know, treats like that. It's or, organ meat. We, you know, like we've got like fancy, fancy treats and stuff. So, um, I just, I, I really care about the quality. You know, like eating food is very important for humans and for dogs. Like eating is health. I'm one of those people where yep. more into healthy food to avoid medical stuff. So, you know, a super active lifestyle. I feel like the hip and joint stuff is so important and really I would is. rather invest a little bit throughout my dog's life than have like big medical bills later, or maybe like the last five years of my dog's life isn't is quality because I didn't put in the time and the energy, you know, to my dog's health. So I really like traits. I like their quality and they, they're not, they're not like pushy people. The owners, the other owners that we're um, part owners with, it's really cool people. What it's is like, in the hip and joint supplements do you think that are like the key ingredients? Cause I know that's something that my dog who passed a couple years ago had, and now our older dog, Dax, who's 10. Yeah. We're, we're dealing I'm with not that. Good at, like pronouncing things. <laughs> like, like that's one of my, my things is I, I slaughter the names of things. <laughs> I could go grab you one and like try my best to read it. But, um, one the thing that really stuck out for me when I was like researching traits is I do a lot of yoga and my yoga instructor was always talking about like, um, flossing the nerves and like, there's like certain movements you do that help with your nervous system. And I have sciatica problems. So I know that like joints and like movement, it's just, it's crucial to like, I can move around I can do stuff and nobody would know that I have chronic pain all the time, Wow, you know? Um, so it's like, I know how much certain movements and certain like food, like taking B6 for me helps my carpal tunnel. So it's like, okay, if I, if a fisherman told me I should take B6 and it helped a ton you know, how, how would that not help my dogs, you know? So that's really what my main thing is. I know what helps me and I know what's like made a big, in, like dramatic, dramatic impact on my life. My dogs are so active. Like we hike to the peaks of mountains. You know, I want them to get quality care too. And dogs are so hard to read if they're in pain, you know, yes. like they, they're really hard to know like what's going on. So I don't want to wait until it's too late and then try to like, undo damage that's been done because wear and tear in your joints it's it looks really you know at what point do you start giving joint supplements in their life um i started giving them to my dogs when they were adults already um we adopted louie as an adult and i didn't get into like when i had carl i just fed him kibble i didn't mm -hmm. know any better um my the local Paws and Claws, I don't know if you saw that fundraiser we did for Paws and Claws, the local nonprofit shelter. I have learned so much from her. She tries to feed her dogs a lot of whole foods. So I've gotten a lot of my information from her and my best friend, um, Nat. She gives her dogs all kinds of supplements and she's done a bunch of research because her large breed dog, Jameson, he's a giant and he started slowing down a bunch. And the second she put him on hip and joint, he acted like a puppy. Wow. Like it was like night and day. He went from like grumpy old dog to like springy, playful, swimming. And that for me was like, I've known Jameson since like he was a couple years old and now he is like 10. He's, he's giant. So, you know, for some dogs, it's like way more important. I feel like maybe for others, but you know, just like people, we all have our own thing. Um, and I started doing probiotics, I think first. That's just, I didn't know the difference between the enzymes that you put. So dogs who eat kibbles need enzymes and then there's the probiotics and like just trying to learn like how they affect and how they digest and what they do is a whole thing. Um, so it's just been a slow, a slow learning progress. <laughs> like every little piece of information, I'm like, oh, I, my dogs need that. You know, typical dog mom, like just trying to make my dog's life better as I go. And then there's Echo, who I already knew most of these things by the time I got her. Carl's been my learning curve. <laughs> I love this. I love hearing the names of the dogs I see on your Instagram. I think it's it's fantastic. <laughs> Echo's and been laying at my feet this whole. Oh, yeah. 
Oh yeah. That's a, that's a good dog. So the supplements that you're talking about, are they all traits or do you get them from different areas? Nope. They're all traits. Um, I stopped. So I had this yeah. other probiotic and I just used it up until it was gone, but I, I like traits so much better because it's a treat and mm -hmm. you don't have to like pour powder into and like make this dusty, like dry. I, I know what you're talking I, about. Yeah. I used to mix in like pumpkin or squash. I, my dogs still get pumpkin and squash or whatever, but, yep. um, just, try my best you know and it's like the dogs love traits so much more than they liked um the other stuff so it's like well it's better quality and the dogs like it more why not the thing i loved about this conversation is yes we talked about you going viral but we actually talked about dogs we dug into that and why you you blew me away multiple times with how like legit of like a trainer you are and how much you know about dogs and i think it's just absolutely fantastic and if you weren't so busy with all these requests, I'd say, I want to hire you as a trainer. Cause like I said, I can use well, some assistance I, right now. I schedule my time. I don't overbook myself. Um, so if you did want to do training with me, we can absolutely set up a zoom. Uh, and very interesting. the way that you uh, reached out to me on Instagram is a perfect way to schedule something. I'm, I'm super interested. I think um, this Saturday I've got like three of them lined up in a row and they're probably, I think they're all TikTok people actually. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. That is absolutely fantastic. I mean, so in a, in, in a way your life has changed for the good because of your yeah. viral video, right? Yeah. My goal is, so this is, this is actually, ah, you're the first person to actually make me remember my goal. People always ask me, so what are you planning in the future? And I'm like, oh, I don't know, just, just bumbling through. And I'm like, oh, no, no. My, my whole goal has been, I want to be just, just popular enough in the dog community that I could travel somewhere and like do some dog trainings to help pay for my travel expenses. That's my goal. Because if I could like, you know, have a little meeting at like a, a dog park or a dog friendly something and have like 10 people show up and do like, you know what I mean? Like an on the spot training where you bring your dog and meet him right there and we work on some stuff. Um, hey, let's stop calling 911 on my phone. Goodness, no. Thank you, Vern. <laughs> I was wondering why you're so quiet. <laughs> call 911. Up to no good. Up to <laughs> no <you>. good. <laughs> um, so that, that would be my goal. I don't really want like, I don't want to go somewhere and have, you know, you know how celebrities, they have that like, they try to hide for, you know, they don't want paparazzi. <laughs> I, don't want, I don't need paparazzi or paparazzi. Um, but I would, I would like to be just well-known enough in the dog community as like, or just a respected dog trainer, um, just so I can help people teach their dogs recall. That would be my goal is for people to know how to train recall. I love it. I just, I absolutely love through this conversation, how, like I said, you've become somewhat of overnight sensation and you're just completely grounded you are who you are. You're very happy yeah. with that. You're very happy in Skagway. And uh, I feel just... like some people are surprised by that because I've said no a handful of times to stuff and people are like, wait, what? Like, no, <laughs> Good for that's you. Not gonna that's not going to work for me. Like people went on the puppy bus to do like an interview or something. I'm like, no, I'm going to stress my dogs out. Like people can't come on the bus. People want to pay. They're like, I would pay so much money just to ride the bus. Like, Too bad. You're not a dog. <laughs> like it can't happen I like you can't like I don't know accepting a large amount of money just for them to ride on the bus sure seems like a great like idea but that's it's not for the dogs to be a dog and I really hold that space for the mountain mutts you know that's like it's for them in a 24 hour span they get one hour to be a dog like I don't want to ruin that you know I love it. I love that. I absolutely love that. The dogs are number one. They will always be number one. They will always be. We're, and also in their owners too, because there's so many dogs I know that are nervous. And I don't like one owner was like, thank you for not letting cameras on your bus. Cause you know, my dog would probably nervous poop everywhere. And it's like, yeah, I'm not going to let them stick their big, scary cameras, you know, in the dog's face and stuff or, you know, stress them out. And sure. Like my own dog, Louie, he would be scared, but I would be willing to condition him to be okay with that, right? Mm -hmm. But that's my own personal dog. And this is like, my life is conditioning dogs, but people who sign up their dog to decompress, that's not for them. You know, this is, that's their time. Like my dogs can decompress other times. Like we do, you know, when, when I'm pack walking, Carl and Echo are working 
it's not always a decompression for them. They all, they often have a job to do while we're working. Um, so they also need decompression outside of pack walks. Uh, they need to go for like one-on-one -on -one with me or go play ball or hike with like nothing with no other dogs, you know, around. Mm -hmm. So just try to be mindful of what the dogs need. Cause that's what my whole business is built upon is the dogs getting physical and mental enrichment. I love it. I absolutely love it. Here I am thinking I was a good dog, dad. You oh, are dog dad. You did training with your dog. That's better than <laughs> you are incredible though. You're, you're absolutely incredible. You're an inspiration, honestly, because let's be real. How many people would blow up overnight and still have the same mindset they did the day before? Right. I, I think that's absolutely unbelievable. And I'm, yeah, I'm, like, I'm, I'm really glad that my husband is like on the same page with that kind of stuff too. He's a very like even keeled level-headed guy. He's, he's always just kind of like helped from like help support me and what I would like to do. I remember when he first started working with me, I was like, so do you like it? Like, do you like working with me? Do you like walking the dogs? And he's like, well, I'm not a, as passionate about it as you. And I'm like, you probably never will be. This is like my weird quirk. You know, I'm, I'm like one of the weird dog ladies out there. I understand that. But do you like the job? And after he did it longer, um, he actually went and applied at another job, like an office job, did it for one day. And he's like, I can't. <laughs> he came back and he's driving the bus and he's super happy. And he's like, I can't do anything else other than drive the puppy bus. And I'm like, see, you got addicted to self-employment and being outside, getting exercise and you're hanging out with dogs. That's the and best. There's a lot of like downsides that go with it. Like you got to clean up a lot of messes. They poop on your bus. Like I got poop on my shoe the other day and you get poop on your hands. Like it's definitely a dirty, dirty, stinky job. I come in stinking. Like I can't after work, like go sit at the restaurant unless I don't care that I smell like wet dog and forest, you know, <laughs> um, I like you know, there's like, there's a downside. Like I have a lot of, um, like sciatica pain from carrying, mm -hmm. um, I used to wear a dog walking belt mm -hmm. and there was too much weight on one side. So now oh, that's God. why I wear my fly fishing vest and I get teased about it online. Sometimes people think it's like excessive and I'm like, you don't know at all what you're talking about. It is not mm -hmm. excessive because carrying stuff on your hips when you have a hip problem <laughs> kind of sucks. Um, and the fly fishing vest, everything is just right here. I don't have to like swing a backpack off and dig into it because that's when stuff goes down. Every time something happens on my walk, it's because I'm bent over picking up poop or I'm like getting into my backpack. That's when somebody comes around the corner, you know, and then it's like my dogs went up to say hi and it's like, oh no, sorry. Hope you don't mind. Whoops. So having my husband has kind of eliminated a lot of those because while I'm picking up poop, he's watching. Mm. or he's picking up poop and I'm watching it. I used to have to tie dogs up to a post and let them off one by one to go potty. So I could pick up poop and like, cause you know, it's learning my lessons as I go. All the things I do are from mistakes I've made. <laughs> right. Like we have a sign seating for a reason. And I always try to tell my husband, I'm like, I'm, I'm pretty like, don't do that. And then he'll, I'll get on the bus afterwards. And he's like, not followed my rules. And I'm like, just wait, just wait until you make that mistake. And then you'll know why I said that. And then a dog broke our window because he put her in the wrong seat. And I'm like, see, that's why the big crazies go in the back. They have an extra bungee thing on their thing for that extra give. He put this giant dog on our chihuahuas. Like, no, you don't put her there. That's hilarious. <laughs> so the dog is not the same as a chihuahua. Um, so the dogs do have assigned seats then, huh? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And so Lee will sometimes like mix it up and I'm like, don't do that there. I have a reason why I do the things that I do and how it runs so smooth is from all this preparation. It's how kind of long? like when I go camping. People are always like, I love going camping with you because you brought all the things I didn't think of. <laughs> <laughs> and how long are they on the bus? Um, each slot's about two hours for pickup, walk, and then drop off. That's incredible. I absolutely love it. Why would you apply for another job? It just sounds like the job of my dreams. Also like to make your own hours and like, sure. Yeah. I do have to, you know, offer my services when they're needed. Like I can't just do it whenever I want. Um, but I've always turned down evening walks. I just don't like working in the evening. I, I'm very like mentally sharp in the morning. I'm a morning person. Like I, I wake up, I'm very productive. And I like by the evening, I would just be sloppier. So I just don't offers my services. I'm like, you're not going to get sloppy. I just won't do it. Wow. 
yeah. su- super, super respectful. I, I just absolutely love that you put the dogs on the one. That just that means a lot to me. My, I feel like my dad is like really taught me how to be like a respectful. Like he always told me, um, find something that you're good at and that you don't mind doing, and the money will follow. And so it might take a long time to get there, but if 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 you're good at it people will pay you for it. And as long as you don't mind, he's like, you don't want to love it because those are your hobbies. You know, you, you don't want to make your hobbies work because I can tell you for sure. I don't hike like I used to with my own personal dogs. Cause I'm tired. Mm. So it, you will, you don't want to make your hobby, your job, because then that ruins the fun for it. So it does need to be something you don't mind doing that you're good at those are like, I feel like the combination. So my dad always, and he got that from a family friend. Um, we used to go up and, uh, had this house on the lake, go canoeing, fishing, you know, Bill. So that's where it's like this family, family saying that's been going, I'm definitely going to teach Vern that saying, find something you don't mind doing that you're good at and the money will follow. I've actually heard that before, but your dad missed is teaching you how to set up your Instagram account, account so you can make money off of it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, my dad is not on media. I remember t- I, I forced him to get, uh, t- uh, what is it, Snapchat. Oh, yeah? Yeah, my dad was like, I'm not getting a smartphone at all. Like, uh, my dad is, like, he's hunter, resisted. fisherman. Yeah, he's outdoorsy. He's always told me, like, it's not too cold. You're just not wearing the right clothes. Just why I can walk outside negative 20 degrees wind chills with my goggles on, just laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Good, old um, so Alaska. Re- Good old Alaska. Yeah. <laughs> you people up there are just you're a different breed, I'll tell you that. But I'm you from are... Michigan. I grew up in Michigan. I um, did not know that. I should have asked yeah. you that. Really? So my dad, like when he would go hunting, he'd go in the UP a lot. Like our family okay. vacations were in the upper peninsula. We're from okay. the lower peninsula. We're gotcha. the trolls under the bridge. <laughs> That's fantastic. Um, so no, yeah, my, my dad is like, he's like a Bigfoot guy. He likes to go out in the woods and. Uh, oh wow. But yeah, yeah, like outdoorsy. Um, Does he believe? Oh yeah, don't you? <laughs> I don't. Do you? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. I've never seen one. Yeah, but I don't know. I, um, I could see how a species could be really good at hiding. Have you ever? just stood in the woods really still probably when i was a kid it's probably been a long time really long time nobody will see you if you just stood still you think so you think a bigfoot just stands still a lot they could <laughs> <laughs> it reminds me of i don't know if you there's this comedian years ago that has passed away his name is mitch hedberg he just had a bunch of one-liners and he was like maybe maybe bigfoot is blurry <laughs> maybe that's maybe. why all the pictures are blurry maybe he is just blurry, <laughs> maybe he is blurry. yeah yeah <laughs> but um but there's like a tv show where you know they go and they like follow I do. yeah so my dad went into the up a long time ago and he built um a fire pit and made this whole camp and it's been there wow. and when the guy on the tv went through they found my dad's camp and they shot their their video at my dad's like built camp my dad was like hey that's mine i built that <laughs> They were there looking for squatch. And my dad's like, yeah, see, I told you that's a hot spot. <laughs> it is hilarious. What in the world? Yeah. You have so many interesting stories. I feel like I can come to Skagway and sit by the fire and you can talk <laughs> yeah, to I didn't me. know we were going to talk about Bigfoot, did you? Oh my God. No, I had no clue. I mean, geez, I, I, I like I like to let these podcasts go wherever they go. And this is super interesting. I absolutely love it. But uh, I know you have uh mother duty dog duty you have a lot of duties and then probably duties to take care of uh, and pick up uh, a lot of duty out in the yard oh yeah one time this is in um it's probably like three years ago we were dog sitting and so my dogs are trained to go poop in a certain spot so they don't like poop in the yard where we hang out but when we're dog sitting the dogs don't know and they as long as they're pooping outside i'm happy right so i was like looking out the window and i see all these like dog turds and i go lee you see that those are dollar signs the more poop we have in the yard the more money we're making <laughs> yeah, right i mean that's a good correlation and that is a very good point. Mad about picking up poop you know it makes it, <laughs> it's picking up poop a little bit better that's so then he was point. like picking up the poop and he was like dollar dollar bills <laughs> <laughs> i love your perspective your mindset and your perspective for both of you is, is absolutely fantastic i get that from my husband i was very pessimistic before my husband 
That's great. Um, my husband's very, very op- like realist though. He's not like over, but he That's likes fantastic. to look at the bright side. He I feel like, like a situation could happen and like some people might <laughs> focus on the negative, but you'll pick apart the good stuff. And it's kind of like, yeah. I always I love that about my husband. I, I feel like the virality couldn't have happened to two better people. Uh, I'm just, I'm super happy for you. And I hope things continue to trend in a positive direction and you're able to make something great for this for you and your, and your dog community. And I hope your goal yeah. comes true. I really do. Yeah, our, we like to just put out like the wholesome stuff on the media, you know? Absolutely. Sometimes times are dark or you're sad and, you know, puppies just make you feel better. Uh, always and if they don't and it's like i don't want to know you <laughs> exactly that's how i feel i know and sometimes people get on my page and they say mean stuff i immediately think like that's why dogs are better than people <laughs> yeah i don't know social media is just uh it's a crazy place there's a lot of goodness and a lot of yeah i don't know not, there's definitely not way more cool people on our tiktok i feel like most of the people that hang out in our lives are so cool um yeah. I don't know. Our, our, I feel like our fan base on TikTok is just been a really fun like way to engage with the internet. There's a bunch of dog peoples and you get a couple of weirdos in there, but um, I usually just go block them. Like you yeah. can go. <laughs> I'm happy to hear that. I'm super happy to hear that. As if people listening to this don't know how to find you because everyone knows how to find you now. Please <laughs> like give your TikTok, give your Instagram, give your website. Go on my on. YouTube channel. We and YouTube. Mix. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Making a baseball series. I actually shot half of it, but it keeps getting so dark that I can't finish <laughs> part two. So I've been trying to put together this second part, but I can't demo because it's so dark. Alaska problems. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, give give the uh, addresses to the listeners. Then go check you out, and I'll link everything in the show notes as well. Everything's so Mo Mountain Mutts. Mo Mountain Mutts. Everything. Yep, Mo Mountain Mutts across all medias. MoMountainMutts.com, YouTube, MoMountainMutts, Instagram, MoMountainMutts, TikTok, MoMountainMutts, Facebook, MoMountainMutts. <laughs> That's fantastic. Keeps it easy. If you haven't trademarked it, do it we do. now. Yeah, we did that all. <laughs> That's fantastic. I'm super happy for you both. I think it's it's amazing. I can't wait to see more of your videos. I'm glad people found you too. You just yeah, a lot of goodness, a lot of goodness. A lot I'm of super goodness. happy. I'm very very thankful you took the time to do this. Uh, obviously you got, you're on mother duty. So I really do appreciate that. I know that's priority number one, but yeah. Thanks for hanging out with him. I knew he'd be a little loud, but no, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Great to meet him. Yeah. If I'm ever in Skagway, I'm coming your way. We'll go for a nice walk. Yeah. <laughs> for a dog walk. Awesome. Well, Mo, it's been a blast. Thank you so much for joining me on this podcast yeah, and you're welcome back any, any time.